Here are 10 professional tips that you may not have known in Meet Your Maker. After playing the game for quite a while, I picked up on a few things that I'd like to share for you guys, and I think it'll help you improve your gameplay. Let's jump on into it. Whenever you're looking at an invisible wall, it might be hard to really know if it's invisible or not. Sometimes while looking at these, you can actually see a small holographic glow. This is pretty easy to see if you really know what you're looking for, and if you take your time on specific bases, you'll know if something is invisible. If you also look at these blocks, an easier way to tell is that if your reticle is red. If it is red, at that point you know that it is an invisible wall and something's behind there as well. This way you don't need to walk straight into it in order to get rid of it, you can anticipate that something's gonna be there and use it to your advantage in your future raids. Keep in mind when building your base as well that other players might be able to do this if they're taking your base slow, however if they are just speed running through everything, chances are they wouldn't notice a small detail. Another cool thing that you can do if you want to make some easy XP is do small raids first. You can do just regular raids, dangerous raids, and when you get to the champion section, you can then go to the brutal bases and actually do those champion raids. Now keep in mind that when you are doing the other raids, getting the amount of XP needed to get to the championship rates themselves will take a lot longer. If you do brutal bases and you get them out the way, you'll get the champion bases even quicker. However, if you're doing a dangerous base, it's going to take quite a while. However, if you don't want to constantly be going up against brutal prices, you can play the dangerous ones and then head over to the brutal side and get yourself some nice XP if you can complete that championship raid on brutal. This is only for if you really need it though. Honestly, playing on brutal gives you a lot more experience and learning for both the building aspect and gameplay aspect on how to do better. So I recommend doing that if you want a little bit of a challenge, but if it is too difficult for you, you can go the other way and then come back to the brutal bases for all the nice XP. Keep in mind, you can't actually skip champion bases as well. You'll have to complete it. So if you are facing too much difficulty in that championship brutal raid, you can always go to dangerous or even the lower level in order to get it done. Here's a nice tip for the builders. Always add extra traps near the absolute end of your base. You want to have at least one fail-safe plan at the very, very end. This can be bolt traps. There's the homing bolt traps as well. Those fire pretty good. Spikes around, maybe bait someone into breaking a spike and then the bolt traps get them from the other side. I've seen some clever things that people have done. Maybe even put an invisible block right in front of your base and then when it comes back, it gets triggered so that way they fall straight in. Whatever catches people off guard. It probably won't end up working in some cases, but on the off chance that it does, it will make for a nice clever way to kill your opponents. Speaking about that, second wave traps are super duper good. You need to find a healthy medium when building your base in order to have a good balanced base. You don't want to front load it, you don't want to back it all up on the second wave, but having that nice middle ground is pretty good. A lot of base makers only think about the front end of the base, so people literally just go through the front, they might even speed through everything, and then after that point, they're just like, alright, everything's done, walk back out. However, if you have a lot of secondary traps, this can pose a bigger threat to them. I don't necessarily do too much secondary traps myself, however, the ones that I do are always in line of sight of the path that you're going to be taking the coming back. Whether that's being further away, catching you off guard, they work quite well because people have this tendency to just try to run up the base once this happens, so those second wave traps can be really OP if used well. This one's a little bit more obvious, but if you are building your bases, look at the replays for some of the weak spots. There's going to be things that players are going to think about that you have never thought about in your base, and they're going to find ways to get around it. You can use these in order to build your base a lot better. I've seen people jumping on the ceiling of my bases, which then led me to add some pistons up there. I've seen people just hugging walls and going around the side, so I was like, all right, maybe I need some arrows and bolt traps there. So watch those replays, especially Especially if the ones are really low debts, they manage to steal your gen mat and leave, take a look at how they did it so that way you can identify the weak spots in your bases and make it a lot better. Again, this one's a little bit more obvious, but I feel like a lot of people don't actually pay attention to those replays when it gives you such crucial information. Next thing on the list is buried treasure. If you're going around raiding or even if you're building, you might hear a very, very loud noise. You 
probably would look at the ground or somewhere on some block and you will see a light up almost kind of tea with a skeleton in it. This is buried treasure. Essentially, if a raider goes to this and breaks it, they'll be collecting themselves a lot of things. Now, you can do a couple of things with this. For me, I just kind of leave it out there for everybody to get if it's out in the obvious. Maybe even draw a path because it does no harm to your base if someone else gets it and it helps the other player out quite a lot. However, if it is in your base, you could always put one sneaky trap on the buried treasure. I have one base where I have done this and it has racked me up tons of kills because people see the buried treasure, they run straight to it to quickly get it, then they get caught with a lot of traps. So keep that in mind. If you are raiding, you can get some easy uh, materials from this. And if you are a builder, you can leave it out in the open or maybe even add a couple traps around it. Here's an awesome tip for you guys as well. Rank up your traps first. There's going to be a lot of different things that you can essentially level up. But ranking up your traps helps so, so much when it comes down to base building. You might prefer to raid, but even so, you're going to be spending most of your time offline unless you're a crazy person and you're spending like 12, 13 hours a day just raiding bases. But most of the time, people are going to be raiding your base bases so if you can get a lot of xp and currency from this it's a good thing so ranking up the traps themselves will help you with that there's a lot of cool different things that you can level up in the traps to make them better it all really depends on your own unique play style but look into it see whatever suits your play style the best see which ones you like the best and give it a rank up you can even do these to the guards as well however i would recommend the traps a little bit more unless you like the guards i personally don't like the guards too much i prefer the traps and there's some really cool things that you can get for all the different ones speaking about upgrades don't forget that your suit can get some pretty good configurations if you haven't taken a look at the upgrades for your suit i highly recommend doing so there's tons of different things that you can mend around your own play style i personally like going for some of the advantages that give me a speed boost after breaking something with my sword i think this is pretty cool there's a lot of different things that you can level up so look into it on your suits because these can make your raids so much better and easier and give you the couple of seconds that you may need to escape these raids again these are a little bit more obvious but i feel like a lot of people overlook these and they forget and it can help you out quite well. Next on the list is that pistons are killers, man. Pistons are one of the best traps in the game, in my opinion. A lot of people try to run through your bases. This is going to happen, and that's actually our next tip. But a lot of people just try to storm through everything. They try to use... Uh, you know, some of their consumables to hide through everything and pistons are going to help you with doing so because everything essentially is a one fire trap. You might have the extra level up to make it fire multiple times, etc. Uh, with the exception of burners, things like that. But if you are using pistons, these are going to constantly be going and you can put some upgrades on these pistons as well to make sure that they block paths excessively long. So that way, if someone is trying to run through something and they do use their consumable, they might be hit with other things because they're going to have to break that piston eventually. And if you put multiple about uh, these pistons, multiple pistons around, it might be difficult for them to actually uh, break all of them, even if they are using a consumable or a barrier, etc. And all I'm saying here is pistons are really good. Use them. You won't regret it. It'll stop from people from just speed running everything. Give it a try. Why not? And my final tip is quite the opposite of that one. If you are raiding and you don't really see too much pistons, more than likely, in cases where people aren't super duper experienced at building, you can probably speed run through these bases. Now, this is going to take a lot of skill and practice, and some bases this doesn't work for at all. But this is a good tip to know. I've ran through so many bases of just literally bolting to the gen mat, parrying everything that comes my way, grabbing the gen mat, dipping out on all the traps that appear when the gen mat is there, and just running out of that base. At that point, I take a little bit of a breather, I start moving a little bit slower, and making sure there's no secondary traps that are going to get me, and then I'm out. One to two kills um, might get me, like I might die one to two times if I'm a little bit too careless, but after that, it's almost a guarantee of always running through these if there's no pistons. And that's why pistons are also so good. But there you go, my friends. Those are some tips that you may not have known or some tips that might help improve your gameplay. Take these into consideration. Look into everything. This is more for the beginner players as well. I'm sure as you play, you'll naturally start knowing these things. But in case you didn't, I hope this helped.
Hey, and Editor King here. I have two bonus tips for you guys as well. Number one is that if you are raiding any bases and you see those holographic cubes, go underneath the base. Sometimes raiders forget and they don't block these up and you can go through them without actually dying. And the second tip is that there, if there is invisible walls, rather than taking your time and looking at them, if you hover over them, you'll notice that your reticle goes red, indicating it is invisible. I hope that helps. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe for some more awesome Meet Your Maker content. And as always, I'm the king. I tip my ground to you guys. And we'll see you in the fog.